Hi, welcome, we're back. Um, so, yeah. now we've got one hour left and three mm. things to talk about. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, this is lots of stuff, but uh, like if we already started with the non-interactive jobs and now we're just adding on top of it. So the first step we previously added was the parallel, like how do you ask for multiple CPUs or multiple tasks if your code supports MPI or not. So this is one way of basically parallelism is like this kind of parallelism is a way of doing your job faster. Like basically your job runs faster, but it, it doesn't mean that your work is doesn't necessarily uh, running faster because um, you might need to do, let's say, the simulation again and again or, or multiple times. And for this, there's a better way. There's a better way, and that better way is called array jobs. Yeah. Uh, so, Richard, I see a black screen on the OBS. Yeah. So, let's talk about next about array jobs. So, this is this kind of feature is much better for if you're going to be running uh, like multiple simulations. You know, like today's icebreaker, there was a lots of uh, people who were going to say that they were in they intend to run multiple simulations of certain kind or multiple data sets and uh, multiple parameters and stuff like that and for these kinds of uh, situations uh, actually using this kind of embarrassingly parallel uh, uh, parallelization uh, with array jobs is much better so what are array jobs so array jobs like uh, jobs that basically if you have a situation yeah. where you have have a written this kind of a slurm script for your should we do it by example maybe uh, well i'll quickly explain the philosophy okay. so uh if you have like you have a job and you need to do it and you have a script for that mm -hmm. and then you run it you submit it into the queue and then you need like need to change okay i need to change the input file here or i need to change the parameters i give to my script or a different input file for the script or something like that and then you write another Slurm script for that, and then you submit that, and then you have like a bunch of these. Well, array job basically does this for you. So basically, if you have, uh, it will, you can give it one Slurm script, and it will like run mul start multiple copies of the same job <coughs> in the queue, but it will give each of these jobs a different number. So like basically like your number one, your number two, your number three, your number four. And, and based on that number, like you have to code this feature, like how do you want to behave based on that number? But if your code supports something that you can, let's say, based based on the number, you choose a different data set, based on the number, you, you choose uh, different parameters or something like that, uh, you can then like go through multiple choices simultaneously in different jobs. So basically, what Richard has copied here is the array job example on our page. So, uh, can you uh, remove the highlighting from the documentation so it's oh, easier to yeah. describe? Sorry. So, so the only differences uh, or only changes to the script, like this is a normal like serial script that you would run for one one only. The only changes are you, that you specify this array, and then you specify like a range of numbers that you want to go through. And maybe in the output file, you can put these wildcards. So for example, here you have this percent %a uh, that describes the number uh, of the array task. And what it does, like when you have this array statement, uh, it, it will basically start 16 jobs, 16 similar jobs that run independently of each other. And they all get the same requirements so the same so the requirements is aren't multiplied or anything like that they all get the same requirements so they all run the basically the same same stuff but the only thing that is different is that each one of these jobs gets this different environment variable or this uh, different value for this environment variable slurm array task id when the job is running so basically when the job is running each one gets its own like number uh, uh, and it does something based on that number. So if you submit the job, then let's look at the output and how it looks in the Slurm queue. So you see it's, it's currently waiting and you see these brackets. So you see that there's, instead of one job, like you get the job ID on, on the left side, 
you get also these brackets and it says that basically there's an array job going with 15 jobs there. Mm -hmm. So now you see that the first one already started, it got started and you still have numbers 1 to 15 in the queue pending. Uh, okay, the first one finished and then you still have the others pending. So each of these jobs runs independently and each of these gets a different uh, different uh, array task ID. So, so you can, with this kind of a, uh, this kind of structure, you can basically like run, usually uh, we recommend that you don't run more than like maybe, maybe a few thousand array IDs in one job, but, but usually, okay, so now Here we, we go. Eat, yes, okay, some of them already finished and some of them are still running. Yeah. So, but you can run like a huge number of, of independent works, uh, jobs here. Uh, and they are all running like independently and they all produce like independent output files. So let's look at one of them. Let's look at zero. Yeah. So there's a task number zero. And five. Yeah. So these are, this is separate, like this is not the same as like MPI tasks or anything like that. So these are RA tasks. So these are like MPI tasks. You have like multiple uh, tasks in the same job communicating with each other. Here we don't have any communication between this. So each of them are running independently whatever you're doing, uh, whatever they're doing, and they, the only change is that they, all of them get this different number that they can then decide what they want to do with. Uh, and if you look at the documentation a bit, bit below, like mm -hmm. below, Mm. There's, there are some uh, examples of how you can how you can do this kind of a mm. mapping. So, for example, here, like this, like a simple example. So, let's say we want to, if we would have run, want to run the Pi uh, example that we or the Pi code that we had, but with different seed numbers, we could have this kind of a like bash case uh, case statement. So, mm -hmm. basically, depending on the array task ID, we will run. Like if the case is zero, then use different seed, and yeah. if one use different seed, and it will run like with five different seed numbers in one one single uh, job. Yeah. So you you only need one SBAT script, and the SBAT script contains information of what to do, yeah. uh, like with the array ID. And this is why we emphasize the bash scripting so much, I guess. Because yes. once you can do the bash scripting, you can do a whole lot here and automate basically anything. Yeah. So basically, like if if you think about like uh, like let's say you have a uh, yeah let's say you have a like a one guy moving like uh, yeah what could be a good example so so uh, so basically this means that like if you have a like a uh, yeah, well, basically here we have <laughs> ind independent jobs that all do whatever they yeah. do. It's like maybe instead of everyone trying to coordinate to get in the cars and drive to the Mocha, you say, okay, everyone do it yourself. We meet here when we're done. Yeah. And then yeah. sort of leave it at that. Yeah, you can also use like uh, below, there's this also this kind of structure that you can use to, for example, read uh, the read parameters mm. from a file. Uh, here we so go. basically over here we use this kind of a sh bash magic. You don't need to necessarily <laughs> know how it works, but yeah. basically it reads a line from a file. Uh, if you look a bit above, you mm. can see the file. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, if we put parameters into a file, so let's say here we specify how many iterations we want to run, and then in the array job we basically get that line for that specific array job. So this way you can like, mm -hmm. let's say, add, like like some of our users, for example, they have a code where they run with different parameters and then they have this kind of iterations file. And then when they want to run a new run or something, they add, add like a new bunch of parameters there. And then they just uh, tell the array job to run like, let's say lines from 110 to 120 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then, be, and they will run those lines of the parameters file. 
Yeah, uh, the Aga tops don't have to start at sea. They don't have to be uh, like. Uh, they don't have to be uh, like you can specify whatever range you want. You can even mm -hmm. put like st uh, like strides so that it jumps every every second number or <laughs> third number, whatever. Uh, but basically, you can you can then like let's say read parameters <laughs> from this file and then uh, run run these independent jobs. Yeah. There's also like if you're running jobs that are very fast, like something like let you want to do an analysis uh, for for thousands of times, and and each of these analysis takes only like let's say a minute, then it's usually a good idea to group these. Uh, these different simulations together so that you have like let's say an array task that runs uh, so in in this example we if we want to try 50 different seed values we could run them 10 seed values per script for five array jobs so basically like you have a four like you can think of the array job as like a big four loop in a sense like you can have like a uh, like outer loop is this array job and it submits individual jobs and you can have an inner loop there that runs even more jobs so yeah. so if you have a really small jobs you can come you can use this kind of structure to run like uh, lots of individual jobs uh, yeah so so you can you can get a lot a lot of these uh, yeah, uh, individual tasks done, and yeah. this is like this is usually like the, it's called embarrassingly parallel because it's so easy to parallelize because like you mm -hmm. you just like basically uh, you if you need to like if you need to do one thing and you need to do it hundred times and all of the hundred things are independent of each other you can just get Huddle help you and tell everybody to do the same thing but but for different like. Uh, well with a different thing yeah. so so let's say like the, the voting in finland that's an embarrassingly parallel problem you you instead of having one voting booth somewhere where people look you mm. up to uh, you have you split the voting booths uh in all across the country and and people can go to whatever booth they want and and you have like you split the problem embarrassingly like you parallelize the problem Mm -hmm. uh, uh, like and make it much easier. Yeah, so that this is so, identical uh, in in the queue. Yeah, so uh, we have forty minutes left. Should we? Would you like to maybe try to go through GPU and then we can have a combined exercise session and people can look at all the different things. And also, we don't have to leave right at four. So. I guess some people can hang around and continue helping with these exercises. And mm. well, you can also come to our garages or other times and we can work together on it. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll quickly mention like this question. So are these run in serial or in parallel? They are running parallel. So basically this wouldn't be the same as you would like write the Slurm script, set parameters there, submit it, open another Slurm script, write parameters there, submit it. Mm -hmm. Right, another Slurm script for yeah. parameters there and submit it. So many people have like some sort of like a for loop that they like submit to huge amount of submissions. But it's uh, better to have like an array job where you basically do one submission yeah. and the array job basically just like uh, everybody does yeah. their own own stuff. And there's another question: Can you do something where the parameter sets are defined in the Python code? Yes, I mean you get this environment variable that has one value and you can use that however so if you're doing something as, complex as long enough, as you have like a uh, like a enumerable set so for mm -hmm. example like like uh, l let's say you have uh, you 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 can enumerate uh, like if you do like the cantor uh, <laughs> cantor mm -hmm. uh, routing you can like enumerate uh, rational numbers to whole numbers yeah. so basically like similar kind of thing if you have something that you can enumerate with numbers you can do it with array jobs yeah so if they independent tasks like with if you okay. want to run real numbers then it's a different thing but yeah okay should we go to what next what's next gpu um or yeah yeah i think yeah we're unfortunately uh quite low on time with these but basically like 
pa RA parallelism is basically like if you have managed to run one, like usually it's recommended that you run one serial job, and if the serial job runs, you can then think about okay, well, how can I do this mapping of array task ID to different parameters, and then you can just like once you get this mapping done, you can just push the array button and like submit hundred of the same uh, mm -hmm. same job. But if you're getting at the point you're submitting tens of thousands, you might want to think a bit about it. And if you're submitting hundreds yes. of thousands, then talk to us yes. first, please. It's okay, easy to make a bash script that will submit all these different things, but okay, so what's next? 